question of the day is uh, ESP in airplanes. Is there room for ESP? Does ESP work? Uh, you know, is it something that uh, pilots can easily use and you can tune into? Stick with us on Flywire. Hi, I'm Scott Purdue, and today on Flywire, we're going to talk about ESP in airplanes. Is it? A, is there a place for it? Um, does it work? We're going to try it out. And uh, <laughs> no, it's not extrasensory perception. It's electron electronic stability protection. Actually, we're going to go play around the uh, GFC 500 and uh, see how that works. We're going to do a couple of my favorite things about the, the 500 and one of you know the the. Altitude pre-select, that's really cool. I love it. And descents, yeah, we're going to do that. And I'm going to, I like IS for climbs and vertical speed for descents. So we're going to do that. But along the way, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go test, uh, we're going to go test the uh, ESP modes, you know, the activation stuff, and uh, see how it works, as well as that blue level button. And, uh, um, before we're gonna we're gonna experiment a little bit, and uh, we're gonna go beyond the regular bounds that uh, that uh, most people actually experience with the GFC, because this airplane can go can go there. We're gonna see how good it, it really is. Portland traffic red and white bonanza back taxi one seven Portland. So anyway, we're gonna try out. Uh, let's see, I got a list, so I don't forget anything. We're gonna explore uh, the, how the ESP works. You gotta be within the uh, autopilot um, engagement parameters, which is plus 20 uh, degrees of pitch and minus 15 degrees of roll, or sorry, pi uh, pitch down. Uh, roll is great, you know, 45 degrees of bank, it's gonna engage. Uh, then uh, 19, uh, let's see, 198 knots for the high speed and uh, 70 knots for the low speed. You gotta be above 200 feet AGL. So we'll try that on the bottom end, um, just to see how that works. Um, and uh, autopilot get engagement envelope, plus or minus 50 degrees of pitch and plus or minus 75 degrees of roll. So we're gonna see how that works, when to roll at it or not. Red and white bonanza clear the runway, Portland. Once. Twice. Both. Left. Both. All right, so that's all good. And let's do uh, 2700 as our altitude. And I'll do 29285 for adding. All right, all good. Temperature's all good. I did that, I did that. Mixture. Prop, throttle to go, flap set, cow flap set, trim set. I'm ready to go. And I don't see anybody on base, nobody on final. Portland traffic, uh, red and white bonanza taking active 1 7 with a downwind departure to the northwest, Portland. Pressures, pressures, airspeed. Uh, the right here. A little bumpy today. Maybe I'll make that a little bit higher. Yaw damper, I got my speed, indicated airspeed, autopilot. So when I hit IIS, indicated airspeed, it captures that speed and I can adjust it with the trim wheel, the up and down wheel, adjust how many knots it is, uh, but uh, it's gonna capture the speed. So if you're high or low than where you want it to be, you can adjust it, but if you don't, you may not be where you think you're going. Right, so it's engaged. 
And it should give me the tone, 200 feet. All right, to 3100, that's what I got for a level off. So we are doing an altitude pre-select with the IES engaged. And I had about 114 knots. Flashing light says it's a capturing. White says that it's armed. Portland traffic, Cessna 04 X-ray, back taxi 17 Portland. And uh, we're level, all right. So let me get my power set up. So the autopilot does a pretty good job and it keys off the altitude and it's gonna work back to that altitude. So unlike some that are, you know, like the uh, STEX which capture a uh, uh, pressure, it's gonna then try to maintain that pressure so it'll keep pitching up and down for that pressure. And you need to adjust that for altitude. With this, uh, this it's like if I have to change the uh, barrel setting, let's see if I can hold my fingers still enough in these bumps, three zero zero five. Put that in there, and it's going to say, okay, so now it's down at 80 feet, so it's going to climb back up to uh, 3,100, because uh, that's where it was set. So that's how this works. It keys off what altitude it is and, and, and a digital number instead of uh, capturing that pressure and trying to do a pressure one. I'm trying to make, go back to that pressure. All right, cool. So that's not a good altimeter setting, so I'm going to change that. Three, zero, one, four. Now we're high, so it should descend back down again. Hopefully that's working. I can't see the red dot. Yeah, it's descending. Good. All right, I am going to slow down because to do this stuff, we don't need to be screaming along in cruise. We're driving along like this, and the uh, first on our list that we want to do, we did the IS climb, we're going to and capture, and we'll do the descent vertical speed later. Uh, so right now, I want to do uh, pitch and roll. So uh, your speed's good. I'm going to disconnect the autopilot, and that's the red red button. I'm going to use it. you got to know all the different ways to disconnect the autopilot, uh, whether it be trim or it be the red button. Uh, or uh, pulling the circuit breaker. I actually installed a, a power switch in this. Goes uh, airplane goes upside down. I, I don't want any autopilot messing with me when I'm actually going upside down on purpose. So anyway, here we go. So now we've got the 45 markers set up in the, uh, for the roll. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll to beyond 45. I don't see anybody on the nose, so 50 degrees, uh, or let's see, 20, 20 degrees and of climb, and see, there we go, and I feel it engaged, and it's pushing the nose down, all right, so 15 degrees of dive, there we go, it should be engaged, and it's going to bring the nose up, nose up is coming up slowly, above 15 and then it kind of stops, stopped at 10. So it's not going to level you off at that point, it didn't level me off, but uh, we're going to try the blue button here in a minute. Uh, let's see, uh, pitch and roll, we did that. So speeds, let's see what happens with the speed control here. It's coming up, there's 75, there's 70, and it's actually engaging and it's pushing the nose down. It enunciated, but I feel it. It's doing that. Actually, not going to do the high speed. That's pretty fast. 185, bumpy day. Uh, I don't want to do that. We'll try that. Leave that for another day. So let's do this. I give it a little bit more juice, and uh, we'll stay in my working area here. All right. Now, what I want to try is the blue button. I actually flew, made a, a another flight. Um, where I tried it with the blue button upside down, and I'll leave the commentary for that video. But, uh, so anyway, here we go. So let's pitch up again, and this one where it'll start the nose down, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the blue button. That engages the autopilot, and it'll take it back to level. Okay, so boom. There we go. It's going to level, level the airplane out, and the autopilot is engaged. So I'm going to disengage it. So instead of just providing that extra impetus to uh, get the nose going where the computer thinks it ought to be, it's going to uh, actually engage the autopilot and level you off. 
So now let's do is I'm primed for this. There's 60 degrees of bank. I feel it engaged for the roll. I'm going to hit the blue button. And there it does. It rolls us right out and levels us out, and the autopilot's engaged. And disconnect it. I slow down a little bit because what I want to do is I want to go over 70 degrees of bank. There we go. And it won't engage. There we go. We got engaged. Less than 70. And uh, it's yelling at me for decent rate. Sorting that out. Okay. All right, so that was just the ESP did not do a level. So in other words, it wouldn't engage the autopilot. The uh, ESP was engaged and it rolled out the bank, but it didn't. It was beyond the point where the blue button would actually actually activate the uh, uh, autopilot and uh, set you level. So that's kind of what I wanted to explore a little bit, and that's real critical, I think. Uh, for how you need to know what that envelope is for that blue button when it's going to work. Uh, very critical because if you're upside down and you hit that blue button and that's what we're going to do in this airplane, we're going to show how that works. So there we go. We're within parameters. We're 60 degrees-ish almost and uh, boom, it levels us out and autopilot works. So That's pretty cool. What else do we need to do here? We're in heading. Uh, Flight director, I like the Crosshair flight director. It's what I had on the uh, 7576 and the uh, 73. I like that better than the V bars. Uh, it's just me. But you can select V bars if you want. That's the cool thing about this autopilot, or sorry, the G3X. Pretty cool. I really like, uh, I gotta admit, uh, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the Garmin. I've had, uh, I've had quite a few. I haven't had the uh, Cessna. Uh, Lanomatic or whatever they call it, uh, autopilot, but I've had uh, the Britain, I had that in one airplane. I've had a bunch of different S Techs, Centuries, uh, Century 2, uh, Century 3, 2000, and I, uh, frankly, the GFC, yeah, they, uh, full disclosure, they're not paying me. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm doing an ad for them in a way because I really, really like the GFC 500. It is an awesome autopilot. It does VNAV as well, and I thought VNAV would be really cool. I mean, it's something I used back in the airline days, the 7.3. Frankly, this autopilot is just about as good as the 7.3's autopilot. Um, and you use VNAV a lot, but, you know, hey, we're not in the flight levels in this airplane. So I really haven't found that many uses of VNAV when I need to do step-downs. Um, I, I would rather see, there we go, with 2800. I would rather fly the airplane and control the descent and all that stuff myself. So, you know, not doing uh, stars, I really don't see much use for the now. But it, I have it, and, I, and it works. Maybe I'll sort something out. One of these. Portland traffic, 04 X-ray turning final for 17 Portland. There, it's altitude is engaged, altitude level off, it's leveling us off here. And that is the quick and dirty for the GFC 500, uh, ESP in particular. Uh, a couple of the good features that I like. Um, if there's uh, other stuff you'd like to see, uh, maybe I've, maybe shoot an approach or something like that. I think I've done that in the past. But if something else you'd like to see, leave in the comment down, down below and I'll uh, do it. All right, so there you have it, um, ESP in a bonanza. Good thing, bad thing. Well, uh, overall, I think it's actually a good thing. Uh, the level blue, the blue level button, I think is a good thing as well. Um, maybe we need extrasensory perception too. Uh, I know I don't have it. So uh, you got to work on your SA to have that ESP, or at least an aspect of that. But to go back to uh, ESP and the Bonanza and the GFC 500, I think it's a good thing. Um, you know, to keep you in parameters, those odd situations where you're in the clouds and you're a little bit unsure about where you are, ESP is going to keep you within boundaries. You're going to still have to fly the airplane, uh, but it'll get you from, keep you from getting too extreme, in particular like the spiral divergence that happens in Bonanza. I think it'll stop that. The blue button works really well. Inside autopilot engagement parameters to, okay, I'm confused. I don't know where I am. I don't, I'm, I, I just need to fix this right now. Let's get level and it engages the autopilot and takes you there. So 
We couldn't exercise the high speed envelope portion of it. It's a real bumpy day today and I'm not gonna get that high in the yellow uh, just to, uh, to try that out. But we did try the low speed and frankly, I don't, I don't know how I feel about the low speed. You know, there is a 200 limit, 200 AGL where, how does it know that? <laughs> if you don't have a radar altimeter, really. So um, anyway, uh, I don't like the pitch down moment, um, especially low to the ground. Maybe it ought to be more than 200 or something. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how, to, how, how I feel about that right now. Not enthusiastic at the moment. But I do like ESP. I do like the blue button, and I think there's a place for it. Uh, it's not GCAST, like uh, you, have you seen that uh, previous video I did with you system in the F-16, it's had a number of saves. For something that level in GA uh, flying, um, you're gonna need a lot more integration, a lot more computer power for the autopilot. Uh, you're gonna need a pretty serious integration between the, uh, basically a digital attitude indicator and the uh, brain with the autopilot to be able to level all that out and uh, make it all work. Um, airspeed's a factor too in uh, coordinating the, uh, the power for a piston engine airplane. I know they're doing a little bit of that with uh, uh, some uh, higher end um, turbine, uh, turboprop airplanes. So, and that's pretty cool, auto land, stuff like that. Pretty long way, I think, for GA. Anyway, hope you like it. Uh, check out the GFC 500 and, you know, Garmin's not paying me anything for this. So hit that like and subscribe. It looks a bit like this here. It helps me with the YouTube, al YouTube algorithm and, uh, if you don't think I'm if you think I'm begging and you don't like that, well, hit don't like. Uh, but anyway, I'd also like to thank my uh, uh, Patreon uh, supporters right here. I appreciate you guys and uh, thanks for your help. If you'd like to support the channel, I'll leave a link down below for the Patreon Flywire page. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Flywire.